It's February 20th. We are drafting best ball teams. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, another Influencer 101 for the backward hats, bro. Rig! Zach Ertz with no Tyler Algier bring back? Yikes! You reached a round for correlation? That's a no-no. You ADP bros disgust me. How about you just live a little? Handcuffing might actually be a way to get unique if the field's avoiding it. The Wi-Fi at this resort is a disaster? These fucking streamers don't have player takes. What if a piss boy draft is the room you need? Oh! All right, GMs, GMs all around. We're back. Man, playing the best ball intro in the middle of February, it does feel every single year that I've done this, we start drafting best ball teams earlier. I remember the first year I started doing randomizer drafts. I think it would have been, uh, what, the year of the pandemic? I mean, we started doing those in like June. And then the next year, it was like after the NFL draft. And every single year, the thirst for best ball drafting is ramped up. And I'm happy to oblige. I will fully admit I am not deep in the weeds on the rookies, as those of you who watched Ship Chasing the other night uh, found out as I was stumbling and butchering uh, all of these rookie names. But we're going to figure this out on the fly. We're going to look back on, what, September 1st, September 2nd at these early drafts and think how young, how naive we all were. We're going to figure out this drafting landscape together and uh, excited to fire up Best Ball Breakfast's regularly here uh, Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern. As the season ramps up, I will definitely be adding even more best ball streams. But I feel like in the middle of fucking February, one stream a week, Mondays at 10 a.m. is enough to satiate our best ball thirst. Let's get the GMs going in the chat. I see a bunch of old friends and new. What is up? Yeah, like Paul said, I can't believe we're already here, but I too am drafting already. Paul was in the uh, the Hand Builders and Opto Bros uh, Discord channel earlier this weekend. He's like, guys, I'm not really feeling XFL. He's like, you know, I respect the hustle. Those of you who are, flash forward like 12 hours later and Paul is playing uh, Showdown XFL. So that's how it goes, right, Paul? <laughs> we all get sucked in. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually the real, the real question. Underdog, win 2024 best ball drafts. I mean, if we do accelerate this timeline, does that just mean that Underdog's going to be offering like Debbie drafts in the next few years. We're going to be drafting ninth graders to get our fix. GM'd all the fellow sickos. What's up, J. Mike? Biscuits are in the microwave. Mm, that sounds like a good morning. My wife made some homemade bread uh, yesterday. Uh, and so not quite biscuit level, but it was good. That's right. No days off. Jordan, 17 drafts in. I will admit this is, I've been registering for the slow drafts, um, you know, getting back on my bullshit with the slow drafts, you know, drafting my guy, Kyle Pitts in the sixth round. I haven't done since the underdog kickoff weekend when I drafted with Jack and those guys, uh, I haven't done a fast draft. This will be my first fast draft here in a while. GM Gary, GM Achievers, GM Stephanie. Oh yes. Thank you, Matt, for setting up uh the thing i think i paint uh pinned it in the chat and i think i have the link down below i'm just gonna start doing like a weekly newsletter uh free newsletter just uh kind of rounding up um stuff that i'm up to some things that make me laugh some things i'm checking out just be a little bit of a hodgepodge i plan to just send those out on fridays kind of a recap of the week maybe a preview of what's to come um i'm constantly told that I'm doing too much stuff that I'm so scattered that I'm all over the place. So this will be a place in your inbox on Fridays where I can get you up to date on everything that is going on. So yes, if you guys want to sign up for that, the link, all we need is your email. You'll be asked to confirm and then you will be on my email list. I will not spam you. It'll be uh, at least to start once a week email. Maybe I'll ramp it up if I'm feeling it, but yep, just once a week in your inbox, the PO box. So thank you, Matt for subbing. And I think I might even do a little giveaway here for the subs to the newsletter. I, do you see over my shoulder here? I got two signed footballs when I was at the uh, the Super Bowl weekend. My friend Aaron hooked me up with these. And uh, one's a signed Trevor Lawrence. One is a couple defensive players. Uh, JJ Watt, ever heard of him? So yeah, I will, uh, I'll do a giveaway for subs and I'll announce how I'm going to do that specifically, but I'm going to give away at least one of those footballs. I might have to hodl the Trevor Lawrence signed football though, because that's pretty cool. 
Um, 10 Minutes says, I'm trying to absorb some info, but I'm waiting until BBM4 to preserve my bankroll. By the way, seeing the Roman numeral four there next to BBM looks pretty badass. I think we should roll with that with the Roman numerals. Um, I definitely respect protecting your bankroll. Uh, these are, you know, I would recommend hopping in the, uh, the little board. What were those? I already entered those slow drafts. I think, yeah, $3 uh, two max entry. So if you are just trying to get your fix, but preserve that bankroll, that $3 one's a nice price point. Jeez, you guys are crushing food today. J. Mike had the biscuits. Christopher has 10 chicken minis from Chick-fil-A. Wow, you guys are getting after it. Sam's already done 25 drafts. Very sick. Uh, KZ, Omni kicking off today. Ben grinding World Baseball Classic tape. Yes, the Omni Fantasy League. That's Ben Gretsch's uh, baby. Uh, it's a very cool fantasy league concept where you basically pull in sporting leagues of basically every sport. You know, you'll have tennis, you'll have World Cup, you'll have uh, Premier League, you'll have WNBA, yada, yada. And you're drafting um, all of those sports across a single draft. And we've been talking about it on Ship Chasing. We're going to have a Ship Chasing Cup going. If you guys are a Ship Chasing VIP, I shared a form for that. But yeah, go to Gretch's Twitter feed if you're interested in Omni Cup. Um, do, do, do. don't ask me these questions, Willis. Um, don't worry. I am going to, I'm in talks with the badge bros. We are going to set up me doing a best or a baseball draft. We are setting that up. I think it might happen even this week, later in the week. Stay tuned. If you thought me trying to figure out an incoming rookie class is comedic, wait until you see me trying to tackle a ding or so chipsy. I hear you badgering me every single time I do a stream to do a baseball stream. Your wishes are about to come true. Later this week, I will do my first underdog baseball, best ball chat. I should also recommend, too, if you guys are uh, interested in the baseball stuff in within the Badge Bros channel, in the Deposit Kingdom Discord, they have threads for all the sports. And I, I poked in someone, I think it was you, Chipsy, tagged me in the baseball thread and I went in there and there were a million messages and I got overwhelmed and I immediately left. But if you do like baseball, apparently that is the place to hang out. Sammy's eating blueberries. That sounds healthy. We got our guy, Nick, uh, dropping tennis alpha, Alcaraz, Sinner, and Corda. Sinner. What a last name. Willis wants to know what's more entertaining kitchen doing a best ball draft or Pete doing a baseball draft. I think they they will be very similar. Dare I say when I do baseball, best ball, I will be living a little. In fact, I'll be living a lot. Um, Chris catch up to the bit. Um, don't even know who that is. Nick Pavetta. Should I, should I go? Oh God. Yeah. I Google a baseball pitcher. Okay. He, he lives in my backyard, though, right? We got a, Is he a Red Sox player? All right. This is too much baseball talk. All right. Let's do it. Let's hop into a, let's hop into a big board draft. We're going to do it live. Figure it out on our feet. 30 seconds per pick, and we are off. Can't wait to see all the sicko red badges. I'm going to predict eight red badges in this draft. We'll say... No, we'll say seven red badges, nine total badges. Ooh, it looks like I came in under. We have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Actually, I was pretty close. I think I was pretty close. How many red badges do we have here? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I was almost perfect. Seven red badges, 10 total. Is that what I said? I think I might have perfectly nailed it. Seven red badges, three others, 10 total badges, and then poor Rodney, and this is fine, holding down the badgeless streets. Mm. Man, Tim Patrick. Now that's a name I haven't seen in a while. Where? What is Tim Patrick's ADP in this? 197.2. Tim Patrick is free. Hmm. The, uh, the bat Colin says he didn't get in badges must get priority. I think the badges, they just, what happens is part of getting the badge is they make you take a nimble finger test. And part of that is just showing incredible hand eye coordination, the dexterity to be able to quickly register when I share the screen. So it's one of the things that 
helps you become a badge bro is having that quickness of finger there's rodney rodney chuck you got the badge on youtube though that's the real that's the real badge that matters i'm drafting from the 112 Yeah, we'll see how much of a piss boy draft this is. I feel like right now the bellwether is like, does Jonathan Taylor go in the first round? You know, if if Jonathan Taylor doesn't go in the first round, then we're definitely in a piss boy draft. Ooh, Brett's saying that we need new badges. You're saying that you don't feel special anymore as a red badge, that there's just too many of them. That's interesting. I don't know. I, I don't know if I disagree with the Kelsey ADP. 10 minutes says Kelsey is great, but at his age, ADP going up by eight seems wild. I mean, this is, I don't know what you mean by going up by eight. This is about where he was going last year. I think it's, I think it's justified. Um, should, I, should I just, should I just lean into it and just get boxed out at wide receiver? Am I just going to feel the pain or am I going to, am I going to chase the avalanche? It's the age old question. Screw you, piss boys. Screw you. High testosterone, back-to-back, JT, B. John Robinson, new year, new me, time for a high testosterone coffee pour. And I'm spilling all over myself because apparently I didn't screw this on enough. I just spilled coffee all over myself after drafting Jonathan Taylor and B. John Robinson. You want to see something? You want to see you want to see how we're on the first show of the year? This is what I just did. This is what I just did. Great. That's where we're at this morning. That's where we're at. Creamed my pants drafting Bijan Robinson and Jonathan Taylor. <sighs> it's true. I deserve that. I absolutely deserve it. I can't wait to select Tim Patrick as my wide receiver one at the start of the third or the back end of the third. Mm. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, just, just relax. Just relax. Please don't make that a nickname. It is. That's that's how I guess it's uh I'm more piss boys in the in the literal sense, not in that I took back to back running backs. Yeah, if you'd like to see me piss my pants. Didn't the pardon my take guys already do that? Didn't they do a, a show where they, they piss their pants on purpose? Hmm. Age play games. I'm upset at how fast this draft is moving compared to the rollover. Oh, okay. Normally, I feel like the stream drafts go a little slower, but everyone is just so jacked up on coffee. Everyone's so jacked up to be drafting again that you guys are just ripping off your picks. All right. Do, what, do we have any interesting starts here? We do have still three quarterbacks going in the second round. Jalen Hurts pick 14, Patrick Mahomes 18, Josh Allen 19. Barkley slides all the way to JW. JW joining me in this high testosterone start here. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry start. Hmm. What are we calling a tight end QB start? We call it the Tim Patrick is your wide receiver one start. Welcome, Sean. It's a new year. In 2023, we draft best ball teams in February. We start our drafts with two running backs and we piss our pants live on stream. That's what we're doing this year. That's what we're doing. Hmm. Mike Williams, man, I don't know how I feel about Mike Williams. I guess if the thought is, are you guys all assuming Ke Keenan Allen is gone and Mike Williams is now the alpha there? Man, I, I really played with fire with this wide receiver shit. I mean, look how gross this board is. 
Look how gross this board is. All right, we're not taking a fucking running back. I'll tell you that much. Hmm. Let's see. We might have to get our quarterback here. I hate this. Whose idea was it to start drafting in February? I, I hate this already. I, I think I do have to bite the bullet and take one goddamn wide receiver here. I'm not taking Christian Watson at 312 just out of principle. Jeez, I don't want to take Joe Burrow. I, I hate this already. Fine. I'm taking Christian Watson. I hate this so much. I hate this so much. Why did I do this to myself? Why did I do this to myself? All right, we're going to go. We go. We follow up our Jonathan Taylor, Bijan Robinson with Christian Watson and TJ Hawkinson. I fully deserve this. I fully deserve this. Mm. I would kill to have Keenan Allen right now. It does feel like I've been seeing the mocks, right, where the Chargers let Keenan walk and then they draft um, Jackson Smith and Jigba. That seems pretty logical. They kind of do the uh, the Tennessee Titans thing where you let uh, A.J. Brown go and then try to draft a, a clone of him. Exactly, AJ. That is the thesis. This team is just bad enough to win the whole thing. For those of you tuning in who have no idea what we're drafting, we are in Underdogs, the big board contest, uh, 2023 pre-draft best ball. It does include the rookies, and we have fucking $200,000 up top. $200,000, and this tournament is already 22.7% filled. Like, this thing will be a quarter filled easily in the next couple days. That's wild. No, GA. I do not want to put this on auto and try another draft room. I'm backing myself into a corner, and then we're going to figure it out. Mm. See, at least Chipsy is doing the, the zero wide receiver in solidarity. Kelsey, Mahomes, ETN, Nick Chubb. Casey's pissing yellow, CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Amari Cooper. Every All the other piss boys. No, uh, yeah, Paul's still pissing. Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, George Kittle. Line of scrimmage broke the ranks after a Tyreek Hill, T. Higgins. Debo couldn't resist Tony Pollard in the late fourth. You can still get Sky Moore. Are we going to be back in on Sky Moore this year? Can't wait to figure out who is going to be our generation Sky Moore. Or maybe just Sky is our generation Sky. Where, where's LaVisca going in these? LaVisca Chenault, 239.5 ADP. Sky Moore, 159.4. All right. All right. Ramondre still kicking around here is nice. Why is why is no one taking Ramondre? ADP 34.4. We're at pick 51. You guys are all such ideological piss boys. You're gonna not, not gonna take Ramondre Stevenson in the in the fifth round. You guys are sick. Don't make me take Ramondre. I will. I will take Ramondre. Ricky, please. Ricky, please. Is anyone is, is stacking done? Does no one stack anymore? We'll see if JW gets uh Rashad Bateman, but he's unstacked. Fields unstacked, but there's no one to stack him with yet. Okay, we do have the Josh Allen dig stack here. We have the Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Okay, so we do have a couple stacks here. And the Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown. So these are the comfy premium stacks out of the second round. God damn it. God damn it, Kyle Pitts. Hmm. 
All right, we are going to have to take another wide receiver. I think I just, God, Kyle Pitts, sixth round Kyle Pitts. Who says no? Who says no to sixth round Kyle Pitts? We are going to just have to take Mike Evans. Back on my bullshit. I just, I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it. Bully tight end, TJ Hawkinson, Kyle Pitts. What could go wrong? Nick, please. Christian Watson at wide receiver one is something that happened to this draft that I took note of. Please, please don't take notes. No notes need to be taken on this show. It's just vibes, guys. No one take notes. No one needs receipts. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Chris says, Mike Evans feels like a great value. I agree. My team through six rounds, Jonathan Taylor, Bijan Robinson, Christian Watson, TJ Hawkinson, Mike Evans, and Kyle Pitts. Hmm. This is a fun question. Matt says, what was your 2022 Pitts exposure and will that be higher or lower in 2023? I think I came in at around 18 or 19%. So over double the field. And what's so tilting to me about it is I actually showed a lot of restraint early on. It was in the final two weeks. He had that fucking long catch in the preseason. I got caught up in Kyle Pitts euphoria. And I know I'm, I was not alone in this. But I probably got 50% of my Kyle Pitts exposure in the final two weeks. Like I was chasing him up the board. I was taking him in the late second, early third, every single time. It was bad. It was bad. But to answer your question, um, I think just the way I draft, I think it'll be hard for me to get over like 20% on a lot of guys. But I think I will be close to or higher, especially if his ADP holds in this sixth round. I've basically been auto-selecting him in the sixth round in the handful of big board drafts I've done so far. So yeah, I think I think it's going to be back even. I'm back on my Kyle Pitts bullshit. I feel like the chat, Matt wants, he says, can you give your team a spicy 10 roast afterwards? I feel like the chat is doing a good enough job of roasting my team in real time. Pass along your roast chats, and I will read them for everyone. Exactly. 2023 Pitts flop lag. Just keep martingaling this guy. Spags and I are going to do two splash plays this week. Uh, I believe we're doing one. Let me look at my calendar. We're going to do one tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, and then we'll have our Friday at 10 a.m. I think we'll definitely draft for one of those. Um, maybe we'll talk rookies for the other. Ooh, I actually hadn't heard this one yet. Nick says, real chance Tannehill lands in Atlanta. That would definitely be good for Pitts. I feel like I've seen Willis go back and forth on his Zeke love. I feel like he's conflicted. At first, one of the first drafts, Willis was letting him pass by. And then I think I saw another comment where he's like, I got to take him in the 11th. See, there you go. I'm taking Zeke in the 10th and 11th. I can't help myself. All right, I'm on the clock. What are we doing? Look at this board. Honestly, like one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. Why did I do this to myself? Anyone have takes on Zay Flowers? Anyone have takes on Jalen Hyatt? Um, just this, just truly a, a disgusting draft. I think I like Hyatt better from what I remember. I think Spags got me on Hyatt. I mean, this is just absolutely disgusting. I feel like I need to take a QB just structurally, I'm not taking a tight end not taking one of these dusty running backs wide receivers. <laughs> this is, this is what I love about rookie season. Hyatt, Hyatt is trash. Let's just take both. We'll just take both the rookies. When in doubt, select the rookies. Hmm. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
happy President's Day. <laughs> Favorite president. You know who I think is I, – I feel like William Taft would have been a best ball streamer. I think he would have just been lounging around, drafting best ball teams. I think that's our dude. Shout out to all the former presidents. Do you guys have today off? I can never, President's Day is one of those that falls into that random thing where half the people seem to end up working, half the people get the day off. Big fat ass Taft, yes, King, exactly. Okay, Hope is middling it. Half day. Taft would be hand building from his bathtub. Ricky doesn't know who William Taft is. Go Google image him. Sammy says this draft is so disgusting that it looks really good. Something Yogi Berra would say. <laughs> yes. William Taft would be sidestepping underdog cardio club. He'd be like, screw it. I don't need, I don't need rake back on my BBM four entries. I ain't getting on the elliptical. No bow socks is off. Ricky has to work. Yeah, West Coast time, 7.30 a.m. It's a little early. Andrew's off all day. Wow, Nick is deadlifting right now. Nick, so you're deadlifting, listening to this stream, and sharing tennis alpha in the chat all at once? Find you a man who can do it all. <laughs> Sammy says, I work for myself. Fuck President's Day. <laughs> Thank you. Trevor says he's he's missed best ball breakfast. Goddamn GM, everyone. It is a fun way to start our Mondays, right? Especially when most of you guys have off today. Willis, I, I was just doing a hypothetical. I, I'm going to be in the lab with Redmond soon. We're, we're going to have some fun stuff planned for uh, BBM4. But that's what we did last year, right? Wasn't Underdog Cardio Club? Was the, one of the things was rake back on your... BBM three entries that you did while on underdog cardio club. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Um, look at how dusty this board is. Look at how dusty this board is, man. Just truly the dustiest of all dusty players. I truly hate it. I truly, truly Hate it. Should we take a quarterback? Stack, uh, well, I can't even stack Jared Goff with Hawkinson because they're not on the same team anymore. We're going to have to find some upside at quarterback, but we're, we're going to have to grab him. Let's take, let's take Elijah Moore. Rodgers goes to the Jets. Elijah Moore finally fulfills his potential. That's the story I'm telling myself on this Monday morning in fucking February. I've definitely spent spent more on a good bit. I don't know. I've just been reviewing some of these um, these winners, you know, these guys that win $2 million playing best ball, and they're like, you just start with two running backs, stack up week 17, and everything else works out. H plays is winning the rollover draft. How many of you guys are in the rollover draft right now? Don't, Casey, cool snipe on Goff. Don't even talk to me about snipes. You guys have sniped every single wide receiver from me. There's no sniping anymore. This is just a, a post-apocalyptic wasteland where we're all just trying to survive. Wide receivers are like oxygen. And I can barely get a gasp. We all do. We all do. We all want this draft to end. We all want this draft to end. Ugh. Let's see. Where, where did our piss boys break the ranks here? Uh, Paul finally took a running back in round eight. Cam Akers. And then Zach Chardonnay in round 10. Let's see. Uh, Super Shorty. No, he, he had Kenneth Walker in the second. Jameer Gibbs in the sixth. Oh, Casey finally took J.K. Dobbins in the seventh. It almost seems like 
zero RB was a nice strategy in this draft room if you're getting Cam Akers and J.K. Dobbins as your running back ones. Man, Kyler Murray's such an interesting one to me. When, when are you guys, like, set the over-under, what week do you think Kyler Murray plays? To me, like, a fair number would be, like, a week four. But if, if they're just a complete dumpster fire, I don't know. I, I just get a little spooked by Kyler in this whole Arizona situation. I don't even think it's bad value, you know, in this range when he's priced alongside all of these other guys, Kirk, Goff, like, the upside is certainly there, but in most scenarios, um, Kyler's kind of freaking me out. Okay. Week seven. Yeah. See, you guys are even higher than me and see, okay. You guys are, are on the same wavelength. I am. He won't play Arizona shits the bed. Pete, can you do another draft to redeem yourself? Maybe, maybe we could fire up back to back. I'm not making any promises. Although this draft is going very fast. It is going very fast. So if, if we get the badge bros in here and we're just ripping picks, not bleeding the clock, I guess I'm the only one bleeding the clock as I'm paralyzed with indecision at every pick because the board makes me want to vomit. Yeah, I, I, I think it might be. I think it might be a two draft morning. I did make a second batch of coffee specifically for a coffee pour that I proceeded to dump all over myself. For those of you just tuning in, this is how we started the day. And it's been all downhill from there. Took two running backs, pissed my pants with coffee, and now drafting just an absolutely disgusting humdinger of a team. Underdog should name one of their baseball contests a humdinger. Have they done that before? They have the dinger. I feel like the humdinger would be a really nice contest name. Maybe, maybe Colin says maybe a redo coffee pour before the next draft. I think so. I might even just go change my shorts, just try to do a full hard reset on everything that's going on this morning. Look, Christopher, Christopher says the way this draft is going, this stream could turn into a hot tub stream. I need to start to really think, you know, if numbers start to dip, if subs continue to plateau around here, I might have to go full hot tub streamer. I think I have the space for an inflatable hot tub back here. I think I have the space. We might have to head in that direction. All right. Damn it. My idea well, no, actually my idea is going to work. I'm taking Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers is going to the Jets and this Aaron Rodgers, Elijah Moore stack is going to take me to the promised land. Nailed that. And now what is the second thing I need to do here? I guess we could, I guess we could start taking, uh, Sean Tucker's a hotly debated guy. I think we could take Sean Tucker, right? No, you know what? This draft has been all about doing things I hate. And I think we just need to purge ourselves of everything that is gross, of everything that we don't believe in, and take David Montgomery. Last year, I took zero shares of David Montgomery in BBM3. And to start the season off on the ship chasing draft we did last week and tonight, I have selected David Montgomery. It's a new year, new me. 12th round, David Montgomery. You guys have jumped the fucking shark. Letting David Montgomery slip to me at pick 123. You ideological piss boy fish. Can't wait for David Montgomery to be the timeshare back on in some shitty offense next year. See, this is this is the other thing about 2023. There's all these deep fake accusations. Willis doesn't think this is me. Thinks this is definitely a clone. What do I need to do? Ask me a question that only the real Peter Overzet would be able to answer. Ask me a question, and then you can find out once and for all, have I been abducted? Would the real Peter 
start Jonathan Taylor, B. John Robinson, spill coffee all over himself, draft Kyle Pitts in the sixth round, select Jared Goff as his QB1, and then select David Montgomery. Would the real Peter do that? I'm here to answer your questions. How do I feel about Girl Pete referencing the bot that Spags drafted with on Splash Play when I was on paternity leave? I was impressed with Girl Pete. Um, I thought she had some really good takes. I thought she ran circles around Spags intellectually. I was impressed with her fantasy football acumen. And I could envision a future where Girl Pete does all my streams for me. Uh-oh. Not Montgomery. Pete, I'm here if you need to talk. Guys, what if this draft... I think this this entire draft is a call for help. We're drafting in, on February 20th. I'm selecting two running backs early. David Montgomery. I mean, come on. I passed on David Montgomery in the sixth all last year. Do you know? Do you know what bullet I was thinking? You know, I, I was I was definitely underweight on Josh Jacobs. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I had a decent amount of Josh Jacobs just from ship chasing and in these red badge brigade drafts because he would always fall to me. But I am so thankful that my bit was not drafting David Montgomery and not not drafting Josh Jacobs because that bit would have been a tougher scene. That one would have been a tough scene. Oh, Peter, remember the guy you famously took zero percent of? Yeah, he was the league winner in 2022. Really dodged a bullet on that one. Who did the Houston Texans play in week 17? 2022, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Would real Pete know that? I mean, would fake Pete know that? Quick Laden thinks what clone Pete thinks David Montgomery's ADP should be. Jay Chang, Pete, if you win the $2 million, will you still make content? Brother, I don't know what life's like without making content. It's all I know what to do. I wake up every morning and I think of myself as just a content vehicle. It's not even what I want to do. It's what I was born to do, Jay Chang. Money won't change me. I'll still be here pouring coffee on myself. If anything, I'll just hire someone to pour coffee on me for me. Um, okay. I'll take Chase Claypool. Whatever. I'll take Chase Claypool. That seems like a good time. Should I keep doing my, my 2021 stacks? I guess Kenny Pickett never did Kenny Pickett and Chase Claypool overlap at all. Hmm. You know what? We're going to do Jordan Love. We're going to stack up Christian Watson, who we took at pick 36 with Jordan Love. Look at this dusty-ass QB room. Jared Goff, Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love. Arnold says, I refuse to believe a real human being will be drafting best ball this early. I'm telling you, I was able to basically... The chat GPT and the AI group um, behind that artificial intelligence, they offered to fly me in. Um, I recorded hundreds of hours of voice samples, um, various movements. Um, you know when they do those, uh, like the video game stuff, and they have the guy in the green suits and the little balls and all that? I did all this stuff with them. And the goal was to create a bot who could draft for me until the NFL draft. And I think they did an incredible job. I think they did an incredible job. We do need to work on the steady hand when pouring coffee. We need to work on some of the draft philosophies. But ultimately, I've been ha very happy with how they created me. I mean, with what they created for me. What's your take on Mayer and Kincaid? I think they look like great values at the end of the draft. I would love to sprinkle them into some tight end three builds. I don't think I'd want to walk away from a draft with Mayer as my tight end two, but I do think if you get an anchor tight end early, that pairing them with two late round 
rookie tight ends is a completely viable strategy. Yeah, can someone adjust the sliders? Offseason Pete Bot needs a draft wide receiver setting increased. I have drank a lot of coffee this morning already. Jordan says he's been drafting a bunch of four tight ends. That seems like too much. Too much. Four guys that are going to score you six and a half points a week seems like too much. What do I think of Spags' transformation into an absolute best ball grinding machine? Spags is a workhorse, man. You know, I'm trying to get bots to replace everything I do. Spags is just rolling up his sleeves and getting to work. He's dove deep into the rookies. I did get a... Spags and I had a, a little debate about the Brees Hall ADP on Splash Play last week. And uh, and then, spe then speaking of the $2 million man, Pat Corain slid into my DMs and said he wanted to come argue about Brees Hall's ADP with Spags and I. So I think we're going to get Corain on Splash Play here soon. Corrine and I are on the pro Brees Hall side. Um, that take being, I think he would be a first round pick if he didn't get injured last year. Um, he goes at 212 here, which still seems like a nice value to me. Um, so yeah, Brees Hall will be a fun one. Can definitely get him at a discount in some of these drafts. Hmm. Thoughts on only drafting players on rookie contracts. I'm curious to hear your logic on that. If the logic is just drafting young players who are capable of breaking out, um, I'm on board with that. But what, is, uh, what does the rookie contract thing have to do with anything? <laughs> Tim Patrick at the top of the queue. Who the hell is Rashi Rice? This is You know who was good? I, I like, God, I'm such a sucker for Darius Slayton. I'm such a sucker for Darius Slayton. Are there any running backs we can take? Are there any running backs? I think Pat said he liked Dwayne McBride. We're just going to draft rookie running backs. That's what we're going to do. Darius Slayton, Dwayne McBride, throwing ADP out the window. They say to trust wisdom of the crowds. Well, I don't fucking trust you guys. Ashton is catching up. I'm working all day and listening on 2X because I'm behind per usual. Let me know how me spilling coffee on myself sounds at 2X speed. Is Jimmy G going to play? I fully expect Jimmy G to be a starter somewhere. So many so many teams uh, are in desperate need of a quarterback. I feel like it's a lock that Jimmy G is starting somewhere. Robert says, Mina Kimes was put on this earth to do a randomizer draft this summer. Yes, Robert. We... I... All year, I booked the randomizer guests myself, you know, just slid into the DMs, booked the guests. I did. I shot my shot on one dream guest. I put it out on Twitter. You guys shared it, got a lot of traction. Everyone said it would be great. And Mina just ghosted me, just flat out ghosted me. It is what it is. It is what it is, but the boy can dream. Oh, Spags heard his ears were burning and has emerged from his prospect draft spreadsheets to talk about Rashi Rice. Mm. Sammy says, Russ Wilson is going to have a monster season here on Earth One. <laughs> yes, please. From now on, please caveat which of these parallel universes you are projecting your take on. Willis, did I contact Bill Barnwell to put in a word for you? I had too much shame to do that because I get the vibe that uh, Bill probably gets hit up a lot uh, for stuff like that. Like, hey, can you ask Mina this for me? And I'm just like, I'm not going to do that to Bill. We are going to get Bill on ship chasing soon, though. We're overdue. We had been trying to schedule uh, Bill to come on. He was busy with some of his, you know, ESPN content responsibilities during the playoffs. But definitely want to get Bill on ship chasing to chop it up here. So we'll, we'll make sure we get that scheduled sometime this off season. 
Matt had to hop off and now getting caught up. Montgomery Pete blinked twice if being held against your will. Yeah, shout out to Willis for the YouTube members. I forget the exact progression of the badges, but Willis has now been a YouTube member for two years and now has the gold badge flexing on all the haters. Shout out to Willis, a true OG, even if he loves Ezekiel Elliott a little too much. We can definitely do a Matthew Berry randomizer. We did what? I'm trying to think. I think this is, we just wrapped up season three of the randomizer. I think Matthew was on at the end of season two. All right, I'm back on the clock. Um, all right, we, we still need more wide receivers. All right, here we go. Aaron Rodgers, double stack to Corey Davis and Elijah Moore. Disgusting. Do I not have a single Detroit stack? How are we looking at running backs here? Any other rookies I can take? Who the hell is Chase? Deuce Vaughn? Hmm. We are in true spray and pray mode. Let's toss, let's toss Michael Carter into this Jets super stack with Aaron Rodgers. I'm, I'm in full. Sorry, I wasn't even sharing my screen. I'm in full YOLO mode right now. Just absolute ripping it in YOLO mode. Corey Davis, Michael Carter at pick 204, 205. Here's my team so far. And please, if you have digestion issues, if you have a weak stomach, make sure you have a paper bag ready next to you as I read off my team. Jonathan Taylor, Bijan Robinson, Christian Watson, TJ Hawkinson, Mike Evans, Kyle Pitts, Jalen Hyatt, Zay Flowers, Jared Goff, Elijah Moore, Aaron Rodgers, David Montgomery, Chase Claypool, Jordan Love, Darius Slayton, Dwayne McBride, Corey Davis, and Michael Carter. Seems fine. Everyone relax. It seems fine. <laughs> we're, we're all rusty out here, right? My, my streamer game is a little rusty. Christopher, you're trying to skip the line and pay for a 48-month badge? I don't even think if I... I don't even think if you offered me a million dollars, Christopher, I'd be able to do that. Not because I wouldn't accept it. I literally believe the way it's hard-coded in the YouTube system... I can't fast forward badge rewards. You're going to have to earn it the hard way. And frankly, Chris, you're going to have to become a YouTube member to even start. You got a long two years ahead of you. Thank you, Chicago. Thank you. Was Tank Bigsby still available? Is Tank? Who took Tank? Of course, Paul took Tank. Of course. Sammy is still discussing David Montgomery in the multiverse. I'm glad to see that we both feel the same about this, Chipsy. Let's check in on your team. Kelsey Mahomes, ETN Chubb, Jackson Smith and Jigma, Jordan Asson. So you did the same thing as me. We have a very similar thing. We took a Chicago wide receiver, Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool for me. We both took two rookie wide receivers. I took Hyatt and Flowers. You took Jackson Smith and Addison. Okay, you took Kayshawn, uh, Kayshawn Booty. You took Zay Jones. I like the Rashad White pick. I almost took him. Um, uh, Alan Lazard, whew, tough scene. Adam Thielen, oh yeah. Tim Patrick, Cedric Tillman, Parker Washington. I don't even, I didn't, these are, I don't, I'm not even sure if these guys are rookies. Are these just like UDFAs that have never stuck onto a team? Parker Washington, is it, that's a real person. Audio listeners, shout out to the audio listeners. We do regrettably post these. It's the uh, the name of the podcast in a vacuum podcast feed. Also, if you're just tuning in, I mentioned at the top, I am starting a newsletter, free newsletter. It's called the PO Box. Have the link in the show notes pinned in the chat. Would love it if you guys would sign up. We'll drop those in your inbox on Fridays. Going to do a giveaway as well for the subs, and I'll uh, I'll make sure to tease out the details for that. But going to be one of these footballs. Signed footballs, official Super Bowl. Let me let me grab it. Pretty cool. Got the Super Bowl logo. Nice, strong Wilson grip. All 
All right, I'm almost on the clock here. We're at a 3-5-8-2 build. We're done with quarterback. Um, all right, what are we going to do here? Are all the fun rookie tight ends gone? I do love me some Pierre Strong. Let's take Pierre Strong as our running back six, unless there's any rookies I'm missing. Should I take Deuce? Let all right. Hang on. I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab Noah Fant as my third tight end. Chat, you get to decide Pierre Strong or Deuce Vaughn. Pierre Strong or Deuce Vaughn. The chat gets to decide. The chat gets to decide. Actually, Cordero Patterson probably isn't awful either, but it's just not as fun. All right, I got to vote for Strong. Deuce, we got two Strongs. Jordan, we're not doing this four tight end bullshit. Um, all right, I took Strong. All right, all right, Strong, Strong. I know, the Deuce is on the loose is a great one, but I do love it. All right, final team. We can do... Let me make sure that I don't need to go take care of my baby before we hop in another one of these. Just making sure that my services are not needed right now. All right, final team here. Jared Goff, Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love at quarterback. Running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Bijan, David Montgomery, Dwayne McBride, Michael Carter, Pierre Strong. I should have taken a ninth wide receiver. What was I doing? Christian Watson, Mike Evans, Jalen Hyatt, Zay Flowers, Elijah Moore, Chase Claypool, Darius Slayton, Corey Davis, TJ Hawkinson, Kyle Pitts, Noah Fan. This team desperately needed a ninth wide receiver. What was I doing? What was I doing? I could have taken KJ Hamler. Could have been back fully on my bullshit with KJ Hamler. And instead I took a sixth running back. Christopher, my five-year-old helped me do a best ball draft the other night. That's a, If this kind of bot situation doesn't work out where I have the bot do all my drafts for me. All right, let's, let's hop in another one. Let's get this. I need, but I need the badge bros out in full force. I need you guys drafting quickly. Let's go. Let's go. But yes, if the bot thing doesn't work out, hopefully I can just raise my child to draft my best ball teams for me. Hmm. All right, Spags made it into this one. KZ made it back to back. JW made it back to back. I see our guy Sacrilegious in here. Pick one four. We will not make the same mistakes. Everyone, I repeat, we will not make the same mistakes. This is what we're going to do. I, I, I really need a full, clean start here. I'm going to go put on, we're going to feed the ducks for a quick sack. I'm going to go put on new shorts. New shorts. I need a clean start. New shorts, new me. Let's also get a coffee pour, fresh coffee pour. No spillage. Last pour of the day. I have drank way too much coffee. All right, we're back. We're feeling good. I am on the clock, and I'm taking Cooper Cup. I am taking a wide receiver. I'm taking wide receiver Cooper Cup after, holy cow, Josh Allen going 1-3. From username, it's just CBD. New shorts, new music. Feeling good. Feeling clean. Got a wide receiver. New shorts. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Feeling 
good. settling in let's have a good draft out here today guys i feel like we need to start doing pep talks you know like you're in the locker room before going out on the court on the field like a coach just a good pep talk you guys put in the work this week did awesome at practice executing at a high level really appreciated you guys staying after practice on tuesday to do wind sprints feel like your cardio is dialed in and look this draft is going to be tough it's going to require a lot out of you but you guys have put in the work and now I want you to go out there and execute. You don't have to reinvent the wheel out there today. You just need to do what you know, which is draft a solid, structurally sound team. There's going to be a lot of pressure. There's going to be coffee flying. There's going to be the chat chirping. There's going to be wide receivers flying off the shelves, but you need to stick to your game plan. I know it's February. I know you're rusty. I know it's the second draft of the year on stream here on Best Ball Breakfast. But you have it deep within you to draft a good team. We watched the tape of the last draft. You panicked and selected David Montgomery. We can't make those kind of mistakes. We have to learn from our previous mistakes. All right. Spags went Lamb, Amon Ra at the turn. JW with another running back, running back start. JW, are you in the chat? Are you in the chat? Or are you just ripping big board drafts on your own? Back-to-back -back drafts with a very high testosterone start for JW. Is this going to be the most popular stack in the big board? Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Seems like every draft I look at that happens. Hmm. Oh, there you are, JW. I have enough wide receiver drafts. Look, if you're going to do the running back stuff, this is the room. All right, T. Higgins or Devonta Smith? I'll let the chat decide. T. Higgins or Devonta Smith? You guys got 12 seconds to get your votes in. I probably didn't give you enough time to rock the boat here, but Higgins or Devonta? Higgins or Devonta? First one to mention it in the chat. I know we're on a slight delay. T? I saw a T first. Ah, uh, oh, these both came in at the same time. Whew. Looks close. Looks close. All right. Cooper Cup, T. Higgins. We're back. Pissing yellow. Feeling good. Mike, don't be an asshole, Mike. I'm in multiple slow drafts right now where Mahomes and Kelsey have gotten stacked up. We got some T laggers coming in. Well, guess what, guys? I took T. I took T. I've got the two studs from the 2022 Super Bowl, Cooper Cup and T Higgins. Hmm. All right, let's see who's coming back. Someone said they smell Brees Hall. Someone says they can smell Brees Hall on this team. I'm torn. I'm torn. Uh, okay, Brees goes. So sacrilegious saves me. I was going to take Brees Hall there. I was. But I'm gonna now I'm going to grab a wide receiver. DK Metcalf or Chris Olave? I'll let the chat. 24 seconds. I'll let you guys decide again if I gave you enough time. DK Metcalf or Chris Olave. Did you guys see that photo of DK Metcalf jumping 12 feet yesterday? They're going to have to drug test him. Guess what, Pete? They are drug testing him. DK, DK, DK. I see two Olaves, but mainly DKs. Mainly DKs. I like both. I like both. Look at this gam start. Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf. I feel cleansed. I feel like this draft has baptized us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Wide Receivers. Forgive me for my previous sins. Looks like you guys are fairly split on Olave and DK too. That's right. 
This team does fuck Chicago Spartan. Sure does. Hmm. MJ, are you saying I'm duped? MJ says he has the same start in a slow draft. I'm absolutely begging you not to dupe me, bro. I'm begging you. Tell me, tell me who you took with your fourth pick. MJ, tell me, tell me who you took with your fourth and fifth pick. So I definitely can't copy it. What's up, Purple Yosh? Chris Olave does go to Casey. Nice start there, too. My piss boy in crime. My zero rb -er from another mother. Stefan Diggs, Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave. Age plays. Who do you think the next wide receiver is after JJ and Chase? I think it's Cooper Cup. I would be open to arguments for Tyreek Hill. I would be open to arguments for Devontae Adams if Rodgers goes to the Raiders. But I think it's Cooper Cup. Dude has just been absolutely dominant when healthy. Yeah, MJ, it's it's the rules. If you're only three picks into your slow draft with a Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf start, you are legally required to make different selections than I do. Yeah, so we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wide receivers go in the first round of this draft. Two running backs, Austin Eckler and McCaffrey, and then one tight end, Travis Kelsey, and then, of course, one quarterback. Jeez, it's just CBD. Took Josh Allen, Devonta Smith, and Joe Burrow. That's not just CBD. That's something heavier. That is... That's bath salts. It's just bath salts took Josh Allen and Joe Burrow with two of his three picks, first three picks. Okay, all right, the DJ Moore ADP is on the rise. DJ Moore goes at pick 42, probably about where he should be going instead of in the sixth round. That's actually good, it's just LSD. Just vibing, man. Just vibing. Um, let's just keep grabbing some gams. Let's grab George Kittle here. George Kittle, gams only. Theme of this draft, gams only. Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, George Kittle. Hmm. Oh, wow. Arnold's out here galaxy branding trades. Higgins is getting traded to the Rams for a 2034 first round pick. Okay, I appreciate that. Stafford is a must. That's something no one has ever said in a fantasy football draft room since like 2021. But yes, Matthew Stafford is a must. Ashton is vibing to Feed the Ducks in 2X. You got to be getting caught up soon. If you've hit Feed the Duck, you, you've got to be almost live. I do have different music options at my disposal, but for some reason, Feeding the Ducks just always hits right, man. Just always hits. Thank you guys to those who have signed up for the newsletter, the PO box. It's pinned in the chat there. Looks like I'm up to 24 subs. 152 of you watching this and only 24 of you have the heart to subscribe to my newsletter. Hurts, man. It hurts. Mm. Yeah, I need to figure out if we're doing the Swolecast this week. It's it's very uh it's very ambiguous. A better collective is gonna write the checks for the Swolecast to continue throughout the offseason. Write your local congressman. All right, I am on the clock. Hmm. DeAndre Swift seems fine here, um, but I'd rather just get ideological. What do you got? Judy. I do like Drake. I like Jackson Smith. Let's get some Drake London. I feel like I might just have uh, one of Drake London or Kyle Pitts in every draft rule here to start. 
seems like a dumb rule to actually enforce, but in my head, it sounds like a nice rule. I, I thought about Judy Willis. I probably should have done Willis. I probably should have done Judy. Then I could have taken Russ. Thank you, MJ. I will not spam you. I will deliver you value. Wow, it's just CBD. Shout out to just CBD though, because did end up getting the Josh Allen to Gabe Davis stack. That is, I do really think this is a nice price for Swift though. At pick 54, seems like a nice price. Colin says, if you did side-by-sides of this draft in the first draft, it's almost like a bot drafted the first team. It's interesting. It really is interesting. And the fact that the bot did have to go off screen before the next draft, it does bring up a lot of questions. It brings up a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. What is the Gabe ADP? So he would have pick Gabe Davis ADP now at 80.1. Yeah, 30 picks ahead of ADP. It's just LSD. Yeah, Jordan, I bet Jordan says Javante's too cheap right now. I I'm with you on this. You know, like if you were doing individual 12 person leagues or you were playing or just a standard draft, I understand being nervous about Javante Williams. But in these tournaments where two hundred thousand dollars is up top, if Javante's timeline is ahead of schedule and he's good to go week one, and even if that's not the most likely scenario, if that's within the range of outcomes. Javante is an insane value. Um, and it's kind of, I guess, how I kind of feel about the Kyler thing too, right? Like the most likely thing is that he misses a bunch of games, that it's a disaster of a season for the Cardinals. I get that. But man, knowing those guys like Javante, like Kyler, that we know have that massive ceiling and you're just getting big discounts. And just think how quickly the timelines change for these guys. I mean, we did it all last year with Chris Godwin. You know, everyone was worried, oh, Chris Godwin's not going to be ready till mid-October, till November. You know, it's going to lag on. And then he comes back, and he's pretty much fully back to health once he hits the field. And if you took him in the fifth or sixth round of Best Ball Mania, you felt pretty good about those returns last year. So, yeah, I have no problem taking the injury discount. Even if, like, if you get a zero from Javante Williams in round six or seven of a $10 draft with 200 k up top, who cares? Damn it. Why did I just do my big hype train of Javante Williams only to have him sniped from me? All right. Oh, yeah. We are taking Brandon Ayuk. We are taking Brandon Ayuk. Gams only. Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. <sighs> now I feel better. Oh, I feel good. That bot really fucked me earlier. Really tarnished my personal brand. It was nice, though. The bot did allow me to sleep in a little bit more. It was hard to do the the hoodie handoff uh, switch there back in the green room. But yeah, I just want you guys to know that whatever was said during that first draft, I had nothing to do with. I'm just experimenting with new technologies, trying to figure out ways to be more efficient. And sometimes it backfires. Sometimes you review your account that you gave the bot the login for, and you realize they took two running backs with their first two picks and took David Montgomery. There's bugs to be fixed. Completely disagree with this logic. It's not a GPPP. It is exactly like a GPP. Uh, it's very, very comparable to a GPP. Um, all right, what are we going to do here? As far as our, we have some quarterbacks we can stack up a little later. I do think Bateman's a little undervalued here. Um, I could take a running back, but that doesn't seem like fun. We're trying to cleanse ourselves of the bot sin, so we are going to take Rashad Bateman here. Our sixth wide receiver through seven rounds. 
Um, Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, Rashad Bateman, George Kittle, tight end. Um, I threw on uh, gym shorts. Uh, I believe they're East Bay, just generic East Bay shorts. Um, how are you projecting the San Fran QB situation? Um, I'm drafting Trey Lance, and I think that's about it. That's how I'm projecting it. I do, I do think Trey Lance is the optimal pick right now because you are getting a bit of a discount because of the Brock Purdy stuff. But there are scenarios, like if we're going to panic about injury return timelines, like Brock Purdy is a guy that you could see his stuff go south as far as how quickly he's going to be readily or, or ready for, for game action. Whereas Trey Lance, you know, should get all the first team reps through training camp, through the start of the preseason. I don't care if George Kittle says it's Brock Purdy's job to lose. I'm not. This this draft is is a cleanse. You know how guys do their juice cleanse to like rid all the toxins and to start clean? We're not taking David Montgomery on this team. I know. For a while, I, like a lot of my gym clothes are still from East Bay. They hold up remarkably well. They're just very generic. Uh, I've had them for legit like six or seven years. They don't get, they don't go bad. They're durable. And I don't, I don't like the, the gym clothes that have like big flashy logos everywhere. And you know, they're just very subtle East Bay. They get the job done. I like their compression shorts a lot as well. Sign up for East Bay with promo code Pete. Get 10% off your nut, your next compression short. Do you have a propensity for spilling coffee all over yourself? Well, the East Bay's durable shorts will protect you and your nether regions from that scolding hot cup of coffee. Wait, is this breaking news? East Bay? Champs bought East Bay? Holy cow, breaking news. Um, who is the Falcons QB? That's a good question. Well, Nick was in the chat earlier saying he thinks they might, uh, they might get Tannehill. I could, I could see them doing something in free agency, drafting someone. I think they want to give Ritter a bit of a competition. I could definitely see that. Miles Sanders, RB1 at pick 93. Should we do it? Should we break the seal? Anything else I should do here? I don't think I need to mess with any of these wide receivers. Waller doesn't seem like a bad value here. I think I'm gonna take Miles Sanders. I'm gonna break the seal. I'm gonna vomit a little green here. Miles Sanders seems like a nice value at pick 93. Hey, Miles. You want to tell me not to draft you? Sorry, bud. I don't care. I just drafted you. MJ, digging deep into the East Bay research, says they had a 70% closing sale. Huge missed opportunity for generational wealth off shorts and joggers. They should have signed me to be an influencer. We could have saved the company. We could have sold tens and tens of pairs of compression shorts. Matt says, is it too early in the best ball season to start listing, lusting, I believe. Yeah, lusting after teams. Casey's team is looking nice. What is Casey doing over here? It is too early. Diggs, Waddle, Alave, Ridley, Keenan, Marquise Brown, Joe Mixon, and Tua. Sure. Sure, it's fine. It's fine. I think mine's pretty nice. All right. I think we got to make sure we get our guy Lance. Lance, Lance ain't making it back. And we already have Ayuk and Kittle. God, this feels like... The only thing this team is missing is Kyle Pitts. Otherwise, this is a back-on-my-bullshit kind of draft. The squad so far. At quarterback, we got Trey Lance. At tight end, we got Kittle. At running back, we got Sanders. And then we got six wide receivers. Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, Rashad Bateman. Feeling good. 
feeling good. Vadim saying athletic football show talking about Lamar to the Falcons this morning. I have seen that Photoshop floating around on fantasy Twitter. I feel like of the Jersey Photoshops, that's the one with Lamar that gets the most traction. Everyone loves imagining. I mean, God, okay. Myself included. I just got caught up in it. I had a brief second where I imagined Lamar Jackson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, Tyler Algier on the turf in the NFC South. All those dome games, all those shitty secondaries they'd be going against with the Panthers and the Saints and the Bucks. I might have to go change my shorts again. I might have to go change my shorts again thinking about Lamar Jackson on the Falcons. Is 20 rounds too many to not draft another wide receiver? No, yeah, I'll definitely... I'll definitely be adding at least one more wide receiver, but... Yeah, I'll probably stop at seven with this build. Because I'll probably get to three QBs and three tight ends. So that's six more. That takes me to 15. Five more running backs to get to six running backs. Yeah. Two more quarterbacks. One, Two more tight ends. Five more running backs. One more wide receiver. I think that's what we're looking at. Yeah, Target Hog says Lamar with Monken. Uh, Monken? Monken should be better. I agree. I still think Lamar needs... He needs a little bit of help, right? Like they... The Ravens... Uh, Ian Harditz had a tweet the other day that over the past couple years, I believe they have spent the least amount on running back, wide receivers, tight ends, and offensive line of any team in the league. Let me pull that up, that tweet. If they got to give Lamar some help... That's why I think letting him walk, having not fully equipped him with weapons, is just kind of almost unfair to him. Yeah, this was from the Fantasy Life newsletter the other day. The Ravens ranked 31st in money spent on running back, wide receiver, tight end, and O-line since drafting Lamar Jackson in 2018. Their points per game rank during that stretch, fifth. I mean, Lamar Jackson literally putting the team on his back. Can we just get him one playmaker? Maybe it's Rashad Bateman this year. I still feel like they need a little bit more. Need J.K. Dobbins to stay healthy for a full year. It seems like it's a good year for getting like a value on a wide receiver in like the second or third round. Because there's not a lot of the super top end prospects. But it feels like if you're trying to draft a wide receiver in the second or third, there's going to be some guys that, that fit. Um, all right. Is there anything? I'm not taking David Montgomery. Looks like you guys took all the, some of the fun ones. Let's take Khalil Herbert. You took Montgomery in the overflow. Was there an overflow for the second draft too? How's that one going? How is that one going? Trying to see, do we have anything else interesting going on in this draft? Shit, Gordo took, cause I was gonna try to stack up uh, DK with Gino, but I got rugged on that. Are there any other stacks I should be looking out for on this team? Cup, no, Higgins, Burrow's gone. Something with Drake London and Lamar is gone. Yeah, so no other obvious stack stuff right now. What round are you guys in in the overflow? Who's faster? We were about to enter round 11. Okay, you guys are in the 12th. All right. Touche. Touche. What are you guys doing with these rookie QBs? Like, what do you think is the efficient place for, like, Bryce Young and CJ Stroud to go? I wouldn't mind 
adding one of those guys to this build. Pat was in the, uh, Karain was in the ship chasing discord yesterday, listing off some of his favorite uh, running back prospects. He has a tier that has Chardonnay, Sean Tucker, A-Chain, Spears, Bigsby, and Dwayne McBride. Should we take Tucker here? Anything else obvious I'm missing? Don't need these wide receivers. I think we could wait a little bit if we want to push tight end. Let's go ahead and grab another running back. So we had Sean Tucker, our three running backs now, Miles Sanders, Khalil Herbert, Sean Tucker. What's what someone in the chat said there's a huge debate going on around Sean Tucker right now. What's the debate? Fill me in on the debate. I want to head to the proverbial water cooler and debate Sean Tucker with my fellow best ball bros. But I need to get educated on this debate. Chris Spaggs tossing his hat in the ring of the Chris Tucker debate. Tucker with his low 18% avoided tackle rate and negative 0.115 EPA per rush. Scoff. Guess I know where Spaggs stands on this debate. It's not a debate as much as one person is obsessed. Well, now I'm intrigued, Stephanie. Who is the person who is obsessed? Benjamin. The mysterious Benjamin S. dropping into the chat like some kind of oracle from the future says, What's up, Pete? I think Aaron Rodgers to San Francisco and Brady and Gronk go to Miami. Didn't you hear Aaron Rodgers at that, uh, what was the Tahoe golf event or whatever? He was on the tee box. He told the reporters he's not going to San Francisco. He explicitly told them. I can't imagine Aaron Rodgers lying unless he entered his darkness retreat and emerged with a change of heart. It, it will be interesting if if the Brock Purdy injury timeline starts to get a little murky. Like, they can't just go into the season with only Trey Lance, right? Like, if Jimmy Garoppolo walks and Brock Purdy's timeline is extended, it will be interesting to see how they handle the QB2 spot. Maybe they'll just draft another quarterback with their last pick in this NFL draft because the Niners are always capable of pulling a fucking rabbit out of their hat. All right, what should we do here? I feel like I feel like it'd be fun to take Bryce Young. It just seems like this would be fun. Is it a crime to just have a little bit of fun on this Monday morning in our second draft? Last year, in the middle of the summer, I would only draft one team on Best Ball Breakfast, and here we are on February 20th, an hour and 24 minutes into this stream, and I just want to have a little fun. Do I have permission from the chat to take Bryce Young and have a little bit of fun? Permission. I just need to get some permission from the chat. Can I have a little fun? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will. I will. Bryce Young, my first time selecting Bryce Young feels good. Feels real good. All right, sacrilegious, no. The reason you said no was you had ulterior motives. You wanted Bryce Young for yourself, and that's why we had to ignore you. Thank you, thank you. Who's going to fall on the Zeke sword? All right, fun team so far. Recapping it for the audio listeners. Shout out to the audio listeners. Hope you guys are enjoying this sultry, soothing Feed the Ducks bed today. I'm your host, Peter Overshead. We've drafted Trey Lunt. Trey Lunt. Let me try that again from the top. Take two. We've drafted Trey Lance and Bryce Young at quarterback. Miles Sanders, Khalil Herbert, Sean Tucker, 
at running back. Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, Rashad Bateman, that wide receiver, and none other than George Kittle at tight end. What tight ends are we looking at? We're going to have to start taking some tight ends. I do really like the value on these late tight ends. You got the rookies. You got the Gaseckis and Hayden Hurst who are tied to good quarterbacks. You got the second-year guys like Trey McBride, likely Bellinger, Jelani Woods. I like the late tight ends. Do, 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 do. CJ Stroud goes a few picks after. Sac Religious had rookie QB MB. He tried to FUD me into not selecting Bryce Young. I think I'm going to take A Chain. A Chain or Spears? Looks like Pat had those guys in the same tier. A Chain. Let's do it. Rookie running backs, come on down. I actually like uh, Gibson too, but this draft is all about having fun. I feel like we got to get underdog to get the headshots in early. The the lag on the uh, the rookie headshots. I just want to see these guys. I want to know what Sean Tucker looks like. I don't even know what Sean Tucker and A Chain look like. Let's see what these guys look like. What are we even working with here? Here's my dude Sean Tucker. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys. Everyone deserves to know what the players are drafting look like. What up, Sean? Welcome to the squad. Look at this man. This guy's leading me to 200K. Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker is Syracuse's quiet star, but he has a louder side and a couple of laughs. That's how I hope I would be described at my funeral. Peter Overzet is best ball's quiet star, but he has a louder side and a couple of laughs. Let's see A-Chain. see what A-Chain looks like. Oh, yeah. That's a grown-ass man right there. A-chain. But look at it. Grown-ass man, but also, I, I like the uh, the buttoning, the polo, all the way to the top. That's also a nice look. Ooh, you guys didn't tell me A-chain was a track star? Qualifies for NCAA championships in the 100 meter and 4 by 100 That's what I like. Look at this guy. Find you an athlete. A-chain out here, running track, and making fools miss in the open field. I'm sold. I'm sold. One of the the deals Chris says, will your AI clone be speaking at your funeral? Um, when I was pricing it out, I did splurge for the funeral eulogy option. I am a little worried though, after their performance in that first draft. I am getting a little nervous about adding that on. But it was just, it was a bundle price thing. That's what I like to hear, Rodney. A-Chain is a home run hitter. That's what we do around here. We hit dingers, bro. None of these bunts. None of, none of these sack flies. What other baseball terminology can I pull out of my house? None of these inside the park home runs. No. No. We just hit straight dingers, straight humdingers, baby. Over the green monster and into the San Francisco Bay. That's right. Casey wants an episode where I just Google players and rank them. Pete's big board draft. Just a Google sheet, comic science font. All right, we're back up here again. Are we in tight end range? Are we still cranking? Let's just keep having fun. Let's just keep having fun and take Tank Bigsby. One, because of his name, and two, because I'm very excited to see what Tank Bigsby looks like. Because I've heard a lot. I've heard that he doesn't actually look like a big tank. Let's go see what Tank looks like. I want to see what Tank Bigsby looks like looks like my man tank bigsby welcome to the squad welcome to the squad tank all right that's a badass photo tank bigsby doing a little ae is this Ooh, does tank bigsby have an affiliate deal with american eagle tank bigsby an american eagle influencer hell yeah tank 
Hell yeah. That's my tank right there. I might have to go. I might have to go buy some American Eagle jeans after seeing this. I feel like I've been influenced this morning. I feel like I have been. All right, let's 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 do a little research here. AE Athletic Department, Tank Bigsby, age 19. On the field, second year running back in the classroom, liberal arts major. Is there anything that screams fall more than college football and jeans? Nope. We're pairing up with our favorite college athletes to get to know them better and find out how they wear their A and E jeans. How else would they wear them? How do you wear your A and E jeans? Well, boss, I just put them on one foot after the another, like everyone else. Keep reading to learn more about 19 year old running back and liberal arts major tank. Oh no, broken link. You guys are killing me. I wanted more tank content. Shop tanks faves, they're no longer available. Shit, I'm two picks away. I got caught up in tank hype. One sec. I'm not getting timed out on my second best ball stream of the year. We'll come back to tank. We will come back to tank. Should we take Devin Singletary? Are there any tight ends? Are there any QBs I need? Hmm. I do like Trey McBride. I do like Singletary too. This seems like a good price for Singletary. I'm taking Singletary. All right, let me go back. I need to go back to my research on Tank. I, need, I was... So they don't have the link. How would you describe yourself? Tank says he's a nice, generous person. I care about people and I love my family. Do you care about the people who draft you in fantasy though, Tank? That's the real question. When did you start playing football? What are these quite, how did you start playing football? Don't you mean when? What do you mean, how did you start playing football? They put the belly, the ball in my belly and I ran. No, he says, when I was seven, I'd seen my brother playing and the rest is history. Fill in the blank. My favorite thing about football is that I can show my skills and show what God blessed me with. Then we got a photo of Tank wearing the active 24 seven joggers and a super soft sweatshirt. It's so comfortable, Tank says. I know when it gets cold, people are going to love it. Something you're looking forward to doing with friends and family this fall. God, this interview is so wholesome with Tank. I love Thanksgiving break and Christmas break. To be able to have a big event with my family, we don't get to do that often. He's a family man. What important life lesson has football taught you? Never give up. That you can do anything you put your mind to. Football teaches me how to be a man. I feel like this interview was, was generated with an AI bot. What's your personal style off the field? Relaxed? cool and about business. I feel like we really got to know Tank Bigsby today. I feel like we really got to know Tank. All right, we need to get this draft rolling because I, I have to go to the bathroom. Did you notice how the bot, despite chugging coffee, didn't have to go to the bathroom? But me, a real human of flesh and blood is bound by the laws of morality. Mortality was the word I was going for there. <laughs> we had rolled the American Eagle clip. Look, American Eagle, if you're looking to sponsor the stream, you were my go-to place to buy clothes in seventh and eighth grade. I kid you not. I wanted my mom to take me to Abercrombie and Fitch, and she's like, no way. Way too expensive. We're going to American Eagle. I was like, fine. It was like a decent poor man's version of Abercrombie and Fitch. I do like Sam Howell. Thank you for getting us back on track, Ben. Thank you for getting us back on track. Yeah, I like Sam Howell. Like what I saw at the end of last season. Feel like they have some nice weapons. What did they get? They just got a new offensive coordinator. Maybe I will take him here. Actually, there's, there's a guy I want to take. There's another quarterback I want to take. I'm just going to keep loading up on these rookies that, uh, or actually it's probably about time to take my second tight end. I don't want to get too squeezed. Let's take likely. 
We don't have Lamar, but making some bets here on the Ravens, Bateman and Likely, that seems fun. Thank you, Gator. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be doing, I assume so, we'll be doing some best ball drafts over on the Fantasy Life YouTube. And I should definitely get Kendall to swing by here as well now that our XM show is on the shelf for the summer. But yeah, we'll definitely be doing a lot of best ball stuff with the Fantasy Life crew this summer. Dan says, just FYI, I used to be Peter Over's pet, but made a B-Day vid for my mom and didn't want to explain my username. <laughs> That's real love. Real love is sparing your mom a story of how your name on YouTube was Peter Over's pet. But thank you, Dan. Do I prefer Abercrombie or Fitch? In my life, I literally, I think I ended up having one or two pieces of clothing from Abercrombie and Fitch that I was given as a gift. But it was like this the same shirt that you would get at Abercrombie, and this is back in what? This is like 1999. You could get a you could get a nice shirt at American Eagle for like $18. The same shirt at Abercrombie would be like $48. I wasn't rich enough for Abercrombie. I was slumming it up at the old navies and the American Eagles, I did go through a slight Hollister phase. I did have a slight Hollister phase early high school, which again was kind of an arbitrage American Eagle. It was like California Abercrombie and Fitch, but cheaper and more of a, a beach vibe to it. All right, let's take Dwayne. Dwayne McBride. Just keep loading up. Thank you, Steven. I respect that. We all had a slight Hollister phase. I once went, uh, my, the uh, must have been sophomore year. I had a chemistry test. And you know how they would have those novelty t-shirts that had like funny sayings? And I thought it was so fucking funny to buy a shirt at Hollister that said chemistry blows. And it was like a picture of like a beaker or whatever exploding. And I thought it was so hilarious wearing that to my chemistry final. I'm like walking in the room, making sure like the teacher sees it, like puffing out my chest, trying to be like very inconspicuous about it. I don't know if that bit landed that well, but I did have a chemistry blows novelty t-shirt from Hollister. I don't think my mom liked that one that much. I think she got the double entendre. Did I have any oversized starter jackets in the mix? That was more elementary school years for me. Mid 90s, I had the Nuggets uh, starter jacket and I had the Colorado Avalanche starter jacket. The Denver Nuggets old school starter jacket was so sick. This, uh, here, this was the one I had. I'll pull it up on screen. It was this one. Uh, let me go back here because it opened a new tab. This was the starter jacket I had. Just so badass. And then I had the Colorado Avalanche one too. There's a good photo of it. Um... The Avalanche, yeah, this was the Avs one I think I had. Uh, I don't know if I can find the exact Avs one I had, but I think it was roughly this one. Wasn't as cool as the Nuggets one, but still pretty badass. All right, back to my draft. Yeah. Uh, those giant pocket in the front of the starter jackets were the best. Oh, yeah. You know what, Matt? I think I will. He says, if you win 200K, treat yourself to the Nuggets jacket. I will, but only if I win 200K. I can't justify it otherwise. Oh. MJ had a wide selection of woodies. 
<laughs> shirt got me in trouble in middle school. Man, the not the novelty t-shirt era. Now I can't even like bring myself to wear shirts that have any words on them. But man, in middle school and high school, all the rage. Did I just get timed out, Noah Fant? I did, but of all the, the timeouts, I was too busy thinking longingly about novelty shirts, but I took Noah Fant in the last draft, whatever. Thank you, Chicago. It could have been, it could have blown up my structure. It could have blown up my structure. Damn it, I did get a, I was targeting Anthony Richardson. I was trying to play it cool. I wanted to take Anthony Richardson, but he was long gone. I should have taken Richardson ahead of McBride. That's on me. That's on me. Gator had the old school Tampa Bay creamsicle one. Yeah, that one was sweet. That one was sweet. My ex-girlfriend now wife had a 90% angel shirt from Hollister. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, I don't know. I guess, yeah, were we all playing a game of chicken with Richardson? I don't know why I took McBride over Richardson. I should have just locked him up. All right, what quarterback am I going to take? And I still haven't taken my last wide receiver, which is probably fine. I can find a... I should just take KJ Hamler for old time's sake. Man. I guess I have to take Ritter, right? Man, this got real gross. I guess I could take Jacoby. What do you guys think? Why, why is Jacoby so far down here? I feel like Jacoby's going to land somewhere and be a starter. Hmm. Ritter or Brissett? I feel like with Lance and Young. Hmm. Yeah, let's just take Ritter. Just, just YOLO it. I got, I have uh, Drake London. Maybe Ritter just miraculously becomes a good quarterback in the offseason. Now we need to figure out our final wide receiver to take. Ben says, tough guys wear pink shirt was a staple in my elementary school wardrobe. Wow. How old are you? You were wearing this in elementary school? Ooh, Spags reading the tea leaves says, Jacoby will end up the Cardinal stopgap. They hired the Browns QB coach as the OC. I love that meta now too, where it's just like everyone, you know, you, you, you hire Nathaniel Hackett to lure Aaron Rodgers there. <laughs> it would be funny if like, we'll hire the Browns QB coach to lure Jacoby Brissett. I do really think the universe deserves Jacoby Brissett for ever being a better quarterback than Deshaun Watson going forward. That just feels like a karmic way things should play out. All right, I am now crowdsourcing my final wide receiver pick chat. We are heading into the 20th round. This is my team so far. Trey Lance, Bryce Young, Desmond Ritter at quarterback, uh, running back. We got seven of them. Sanders, Khalil Herbert, Sean Tucker, A-Chain, Tank, Devin Singletary, Dwayne McBride, our wide receivers, Cooper Cup, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, Rashad Bateman, our tight ends, George Kittle, Isaiah Likely, Noah Fant. A lot of gams, a lot of gams on this team, a lot of youngins, and now we need a wide receiver. We need a wide receiver to round this bad boy out. I'm seeing a couple Tyler Scotts. He just goes off the board. Just goes off the board right there. You got to be careful. People are listening. I love this name, A.T. Perry. I'm trying not to relapse on this K.J. Hamler stuff. Nathaniel Dell's nickname is Tank? That's incredible. Let's go look this up. I got to see what this guy looks like. Nathaniel Dell. See if he passes the eye test. Oh my God. Look at this head of hair. This might be our dude. Look at that. Nathaniel Tank Dell. All right. I like this dude. I like it. I can see it. Mm. 
man, I have to pee bad. We are going to be ending this stream here shortly. I appreciate you guys hanging out for Best Ball Breakfast. We'll definitely keep these rolling. We'll also be drafting plenty, I'm sure, over on Splash Play with Spags. We're going to be live tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm sure we'll be doing plenty of drafting over on Ship Chasing Wednesday nights at 9.15 p.m. Eastern. But yes, you can count on... We're going we're gonna to add Nathaniel Dell to the squad. You can count on Best Ball Breakfasts every Monday morning at 10 a.m., Despite my bot drafting a truly atrocious team in the first draft, I had a blast kicking things off again. Thank you guys for hanging in the chat this morning, reminiscing about starters jackets, doing in-depth level research on players via their headshots, all of that good stuff. And uh, thank you to those of you who have signed up for my newsletter, the PO box. I got the link down below. I'm going to start um, dropping those in your inbox on Fridays. Completely free newsletter, roundup of everything going on a place for me to do some creative writing. I actually don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it, but um, we'll make sure to keep you posted. And I am going to have a giveaway for the subs. We're going to give one of these footballs to one of you subscribers of the PO box. I think that is it. I appreciate you guys. If you're new here, I would appreciate you to subscribe and hope you guys have a wonderful week. Enjoy the rest of your president's day. Do it up like William Taft lounging around, stuffing your faces, drafting basketball teams. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.